now. Just for an illustration, please watch this. There is a gentleman here who is holding the camera, snapping around. Do you believe that in God's mind, this man can be doing the same thing with what I'm doing right now? Because it is not the activity. By reason of social stratification and honor, you may clap for me first before him. Because it looks like I'm more important than him. In as much as we define, you know, relevance and all of that. But once his heart, if this art of snapping around is motivated by his love for Jesus and intended to be a contributor to make sure that you keep memories as revealing Jesus, what he is doing is called ministry. Are we together now? Yes. When a woman, as I would always use this expression, if a woman gets married and gets pregnant and the baby she's carrying like Hannah, she says, Lord, my, my prayer is that you use this baby in my womb to become a tool for kingdom advance. That act of pregnancy and giving birth is called ministry. Are you learning now? If because of your love for Jesus and your desire to see his kingdom come, you get into business or you get into any circle of influence and God blesses you, you become wealthy and then you see to it that there is comfort and convenience as far as kingdom come is concerned. Your act of doing business, bringing money and being wealthy is called ministry. So a minister is not necessarily a preacher. A preacher is only a minister. If his motivation is his love for Jesus and then the goal of using the platform of preaching is to reveal Jesus and to bring him glory. I don't know if we have this definition clear. Very, very important. Now, if I say all the ministers, don't stand. But if I say all the ministers, stand. If you remain seated, then we have to look closely and know what is wrong. You see that now. Hitherto, if I had said all the ministers, stand. You say, well, I'm not a pastor. But now you know. All the ministers mean all who genuinely love Jesus. And are determined that every activity in their lives will reveal him. And be a contribution to kingdom come. Stand. That's what I said. Please say, I am a minister. Convincingly, one more time. I am a minister. Please say, I am in ministry. Thank you. If it is true that you are a minister, if it is true that you are in ministry, based on this definition, then we can proceed further. So when we say a minister of the gospel, what we generally mean is that you are in the fivefold as revealed in Ephesians chapter, Ephesians chapter 4, where we got the theme for the conference. The Bible says he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. The gifts there are not talents. They are not spiritual gifts. The gifts are men. He gave men as gifts to men are we together now and this gift he called them apostles he gave unto some apostles to some prophets to some evangelists to some pastors and teachers why did he give them please give us the scripture Ephesians chapter 4 from verse um, would that be 11 let's see Ephesians 4 media beautiful thank you why did he give that verse 12 now tells us why he says he gave these gifts that we call the fivefold verse 12 for the perfecting or the maturing of the saints the word perfecting there means to grow to build to mature the saints now I wish we can have it projected because I want to correct something there and then we would begin to teach. Verse 12 now. Verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints. Please look up. For the work of the ministry. 
When you read this, you will think what Paul was saying is that to perfect the saints and then for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. But hear what he's saying. Paul is saying the fivefold, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and pastors are actually the gifts that prepare the ministers. That the ministers now matured can do the work of the ministry. So the ministers are not really the men of God as you call it. The ministers are the gifts or the, 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 the gifts. The men of God are the gifts that now prepare the ministers to do the work of the ministry. What is the work of the ministry? Kingdom advance. We're going to discuss that. Are you seeing now? I'm not insulting your theology. You can, I'm just giving perspective as per what we're dealing with. This is very important because for as long as your idea of the minister is the pastor, the reverend, the bishop, and the man of God, the apostles, and the prophet, you are not wrong, but you are not completely right. He gave gifts to men. The gifts are not talents. He gave men as gifts to men. Those gifts now are mandated to prepare the body of Christ so that the body of Christ now matured can do the work of the ministry and then it says for the edifying of the body of Christ till we come to a state verse 13 it says until we attain a state called the unity of faith hallelujah and of the knowledge of the son of God until we come into a perfect man the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ when you read the, the scriptures that follow, it says, Not to stow and fro by every wind of doctrine, nor the slight of men, wherein they lie to deceive. So he's, he's saying the gifts, those we call men and women of God. Of course, you can call them ministers, I, I, I understand. But now because we're doing, this is a conference that is methodically giving us spiritual intelligence. Those you call the men and the women of God are the gifts that now prepare the ministers. Hallelujah. Hmm. So every time you talk about ministers, see that on one hand, you are right to talk about the fivefold, but in addition to the fivefold, every believer who truly loves Jesus and every believer who is about revealing Jesus with his life, with his profession, and everything around him comes under that category too. Praise the name of the Lord. Here are 10 reasons why people pray. Equal connection with the divine. Prayer is a way to connect with a higher power, expressing devotion, reverence, and a desire for a relationship with God or the divine. Two, seeking guidance. Many people pray to seek wisdom, clarity, and direction in their lives, asking for help in making decisions or understanding difficult situations. 3. Comfort and Peace Prayer can provide comfort during times of distress, offering a sense of peace and reassurance that one is not alone in their struggles. 4. Gratitude Prayer is a way to express thankfulness for the blessings and good things in life, acknowledging the positive aspects of existence. 5. Intercession for Others People often pray for the well-being of others, asking for healing, protection, or blessings for family, friends, or even strangers. 6. Confession and Forgiveness Prayer provides an opportunity for self-reflection, allowing individuals to confess their wrongdoings and seek forgiveness, leading to spiritual cleansing and renewal. 7. Strength and Endurance through prayer, individuals often seek the strength to endure difficult circumstances, asking for the resilience to face challenges. 8. Worship and Adoration Prayer is an act of worship, where individuals praise and adore the divine, celebrating the greatness and goodness of God. 9. Requesting Needs Many people pray to ask for specific needs, whether material, emotional or spiritual, believing that divine intervention can provide solutions or support. 10. 
Cultivating a habit of mindfulness. Regular prayer can foster mindfulness, helping individuals remain focused on their spiritual goals and maintain a sense of purpose and direction in life. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you for liking this message. Thank you for watching this message. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. We love you. We celebrate you. Please share our content with others. Share our content with your follower, your fellow, um, what do I want to say now? Share our content with your friend, with your family, with your loved ones. Share it with your enemies. Share our content anywhere. Believers Global TV to the whole world. Let's gather and preach the gospel of Christ through the power of media. See you in our next video. Don't forget to share the love of Christ with others and share the love of Christ with your friends, with your family, with your enemies, with your loved ones, with anybody at all. Anybody, human being at all. Share the love of Christ with them. And as you do so, the Lord will bless you. The Lord will, the Lord will keep you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And uh, what do I want to say again? Follow us on all of our social media platforms, on Facebook at Believers Global TV, on uh, Instagram at Believers Global TV, on the TikTok at Believers Global TV, on YouTube at Believers Global TV. See you, see you, see you later. Bye.